Now there is a big link to a previous chemistry practical that we have gone through on identifying ions. So if you could click the link on this video to recap those tests as they are tests that we could use on the different water samples. Uh, you could also use a pH indicator to test the pH of the solution. And uh, we're going to show you how to purify the water. Now, in experiments, we talk a lot about distilled water and how important it is to use distilled water. This is because we don't want any di uh, dissolved uh, ions affecting the results, and we want a neutral solution in most cases as well. So here we've got distilled water. Interestingly as well, I have some bottled mineral water here. Now, on the bottles of mineral water, they will show you the ion composition, what ions there are dissolved in this water, because it's from a natural source. It tends to run over natural rocks and it accumulates ions from those rocks. Uh, sometimes in transport, they can collect ions as well. So this is not pure water. It's partly why water from different areas will sometimes have a slightly different taste because it has a different ion composition. Just a bit of a fun fact there. Uh, we're also going to look at tap water. So tap water is not distilled water. We assume that it is pure, but it's not. These tests that we can use are how we can prove that there are substances dissolved, there are ions dissolved in the water, and the pH is not always neutral. So I'm just going to add distilled water. Tap water. mineral water. So again, to recap the ion tests, the cation test, as well as the anion tests, click the link to the video um, for the previous practical demonstration. Now my colleague's going to show you how we purify the water and how we get distilled water for use in practical experiments. So I'm going to do distillation for you guys. Now, you will have done this in lesson, so this is more just a very quick recap. The first thing to point out, this is called a round-bottomed flask. Makes sense because it's got a round bottom. It then, the gas, when we heat it up, will come up there into this, which is called a Liebig condenser. And I'm just going to turn on the tap now. You should see some water rise up. That is only, that's not coming into it, that's going around the outside, that's to make it cold. Okay, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to heat it up, okay. Now, unfortunately, my gas tap is over there, my sink's over there, so I'm going to have to lift it up. And you heat it on a roaring flame, okay. Now, what should happen is this will heat up, forming a gas, because obviously it will evaporate. Once it evaporates, it will go into this, and then around the Liebig condenser, Okay, around the Liebig condenser, it will condense. So I've always taught all of my classes that distillation is the combination of evaporation and condensation. I'll say that again. Distillation, which is the whole apparatus, is the combination of evaporation, which will occur there, and condensation, which will occur there. And if I'm lucky enough, okay, it were water or well, the pure substance from this will come out here if I'm lucky enough. Due to fractional distillation, we'll have heard that before when we talk about or in organic chemistry and we're talking about separating a mixture of crude oil and it's all to do with the boiling point. Whatever has the lower boiling point will evaporate first because clearly the temperature will get up there first, okay? Right, you can see it's starting to bubble now, which will mean it's starting to evaporate. Now, this is just a mixture of ink and water, but it can be a mixture of any things. We can separate anything by it. You could do it with salt water. You could do it with uh, any type of water. And what you'll get out the end should be distilled water. I mean, you could even do it with Coke. But what you get at the end is distilled water, which has no ions in whatsoever. So you can really see it starting to bubble now. OK, so I'm going to hope that it will evaporate and you can start to see some gas come up there and it will start to condense. And I'm starting to see some liquid there. OK, so I will hope to see some water come out here. As you can see, uh, the water 
has started to condense in the Liebig condenser and it should, here we are, it should, look at this, come out and it should come out clear, okay? There we are, it's coming out. You're seeing it's clear. That's a difference. That's because I've separated the mixture. I've made it pure. This is now distilled water. Okay, and this is actually how we make distilled water. It's just in a, uh, a quicker kind of apparatus um, in the lab. And you could keep going on, on this until all of the liquid has evaporated. Now, I'm just going to stop it there, but the key thing is the mixture. That's the key thing, the mixture. That is now distilled water. And you can compare it to the mixture. It's clearly different. Now, I know there's not a huge amount, but that's because I wasn't doing it for that long. But you could, in theory, use this now as distilled water for a titration practical or any practicals that require distilled water. Okay? Now... Unfortunately, the AQA practical guide doesn't talk about this. It more mentions something you're probably more used to, these sorts of apparatus. Now, I don't want to do any of this, but what you would do is you would heat up a conical flask on a gauze, on a roaring flame. Now, I'm not going to do any of this, but I will show you roughly how we would set it up. What you'd do is you'd have a conical flask there, you would have some liquid in there, you would use the roaring flame, you would put this in the conical flask and you would, it would go into a test tube. Now this is the wrong conical flask for the bung, so I would obviously change it. This test tube would then be put in cold water and it would boil and then come out there and just the same really. You've got the evaporation occurring here and the condensation occurring here. Remember, this is a conical flask, this is a test tube. You could do it in either method. I much prefer this method because it's kind of all co collected for, for you and it's the method we most commonly use in lesson. Whereas this method is a much simpler method. Okay? Remember, this practical, all this required practical, links back to Chemistry Practical 5 and the link will be shown now.